We don't talk about soul repression mm. nearly enough. We talk about mental repression, sexual repression, emotional repression, etc. But soul repression is a debilitating thing if it goes on, and it does go on with people. Mm. And it'll, in, you know, if it's not manifested externally, it will manifest internally. Yeah. And you have to turn towards that light. And the more yeah. advanced you are, you know, as a soul, the more necessary that will be. Yeah. Hence, you can't sort of say, well, that person's living a good and happy life, so therefore they're obviously a better person, karmically. Yeah. No, mm. it'll all depend on your evolutionary needs. The Spiritual Freedom Show with Richard Lawrence, where politics is not the answer, materialism counts for nothing, and spirituality will set you free. Hey, hey Darren, hi. So uh, I think we have something special to share today. I mean, every show is special, but we have a particularly important milestone, I think, to celebrate today, which we is do. that this is the 100th episode of the Spiritual Freedom Show. If you Yay! Can yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah so, that's great. Um, that's really Yeah, cool. yeah. Uh, an amazing journey, Shane, that I'm Freedoms, I think, and it's, mm. I think, two and a half years so far that we've been doing this. Is it this. two and a half? Goodness yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah, we've heard from dozens of people out there, you know, we their have. stories, um, their Hundreds, feedback. Hundreds, I'd say. Yeah, their, their experiences, mm. their questions. And, um, you know, that's been a, a total privilege and a pleasure to, to do that. And I must so, say yes. to do it with you. I mean, it's been Well, and real. you yourself. <laughs> uh, I mean, you've taken over the show now, which is the, which is the natural, oh, you order, noticed. Yeah, yeah. natural order you of noticed. things. Yeah, you but, I mean, it's been incredible for me to mm. do it. As mm. I know it has for you because mm. I have learned so, so much. I mean, I've learned from the questions and yeah. I've learned from the comments, but I've especially learned from the nine freedoms. Totally. And I must say I feel much more at one with it. And it was always my favorite book before yeah. we started. Started this yeah. show. It says a lot. Uh, it? And now I feel, you know, we, we've we've got into levels and depths mm. that were, were brand new to me. Yeah. And I think one of the things, hopefully, that we've shown through this show, is that the higher freedom, seventh, eighth, ninth, interplanetary existence, Saturnian existence, solar existence are not, I'm not saying people thought they were, but they're not just there as, as it were to say, well, this is what's coming in the future, isn't this interesting? Mm. They are there to tell us how to live now. And I think that's a big thing because we've been given now a template. We've been told their evolutionary progress, yeah. how they evolve and how they manifest it. And we must have been told it so that we can do the very same thing in a tiny way, right. but the same thing. And this is revolutionary. Absolutely. Uh, and I think one of the words that sort of dominated the spiritual mm. freedom show is the word transmutation. Yeah, completely. I think um, what you highlight there, which I think is a great point, is that not only for long time students of the nine freedoms has this been revelationary, but also who people who are completely new to these teachings, you know, giving, you know, making them accessible in a new way, I think, that they haven't been before. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and we're told these are being studied on the highest realms. That was revealed wow. to Dr. King. Yeah. And they are drawing knowledge and, and wisdom from them that most of us here aren't drawing from them. Um, another thing I think that it's really shown me, and we, I, again, it's something like you can know something and yeah. then you can know something, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's obviously a selfish thing mm. for spiritual people to be focused on themselves. That we knew, yeah. rather than focused on service. And that's a big reorientation that's going on in the world mm. and on the other realms, probably especially on the other realms in certain ways. Yeah. Um, I, I've, one thing I believe is there's more um, connection between the realms than there was. There's more concern about the lower realms because mm. that's an example that was set by the the masters who came to our world, those known as the six adepts and other masters. Um, but, you know, one of the things I think is that people, it's not just that it's selfish, that it is very limiting. Mm. And I think there was this idea before the nine freedoms, and it's still prevalent now, that an advanced person, I would say especially in the East, but not only in the East, actually, um, has to be in perpetual bliss. Now, once they attain nirvana or even a high state of meditation, a samadhi state, or even what they consider to be rightly or wrongly to be enlightenment, they have to stay there. So they feel there's a requirement on them, if they're a lama or of a certain type of grade of initiate, to be always at peace, mm. always at bliss, blissful. Yes, that's a selfish idea when you look at the state of the world. Who should be at peace all the time? No one. No decent person, yeah, but yeah. not only that, it's a limitation. It's mm. a burden 
that's been limiting them. And now we're told in the nine freedoms, even, and particularly in the sixth freedom, ascension, mm -hmm. even after you attain cosmic consciousness, lives ensue. Yeah. You know, because experience in the end trumps even the highest states, because even the highest states are states of experience. I think um, you know, one thing that always struck me about that was just how real it is, because it's not kind of like promising some quick win, some easy path, some, but at the same time, it is giving us a promise, mm. which is that it is inevitable and that we will get there. Mm. Okay, lives ensue, and it, and it highlights the value of experience and, and the, you know, what the path really entails. But at the end, for me, that's even more inspiring than someone providing some sort of empty promise about something mm. that we could do in a weekend course or something like that. Yeah. You know, for me, the nine freedoms is the raw, real truth about... <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I, I saw a clip, just to, to illustrate this recently, of... Um, a, it was a llama, I won't say which one, mm. uh, a Tibetan <laughs> llama, who was um, told about something at one point, this is an old clip, that the Chinese were doing in invading Tibet and so on. And, and this llama was angry. Mm. And their spokesperson felt it necessary to say, well, actually, what the llama really means is that... Because it was not seemly, they considered to be angry about an invasion of their people, <clears throat> even, mm. that you've got to constantly... I mean, that's an extreme example. I see. But I think, you know, people feel that they should, they have to be at peace, to be spiritual, and if mm. they're not, there's something wrong with them. And what we're told, we have this... I mean, it's not in the nine freedoms, but there's this... Brilliant statement, and what, a, what an addition to bring this out on our 100th edition, yeah. by Dr. King. And it's published in his biography, uh, The King Who Came to Earth, and this is the statement. Karma is pressure toward conformity. It is pressure directing you, the mind, and you, the soul, towards you, the spirit. So the idea that all pressure, and let's face it, pressure can manifest as a stressful thing, yeah. is, in, you know... <laughs> In a, in, by its very essence, is wrong, that's a false, burdensome weight to carry. There are some pressures, such as the pressure of conscience, that should make you feel a bit mm. stressful until you act on them. Right, right. And so, yes, we need to find peace. Yes, we need to eventually find bliss. We need to find the higher states. And you can go the other way, of course, and I've come across this many times with people I've known, who focus on service and lose sight of their inner development and the inner states, mm. and that's where it all goes wrong. Um, you know, I don't know if my history is correct, but even in Christianity, first of all, it's a strange thing that monasteries grew up at all because yeah. that's not Out what Jesus yeah. did yeah. or St. Peter or the mm. early disciples, but it did, and it's very much in our DNA on this planet, and mm. certainly was, to, to take the monastic life. Yeah. But what's interesting from my limited knowledge of it is that in, in the early period of the monasteries, the behavior, in, as far as we know, was very of the monks. I don't know so much about the nuns, but of the monks, um, was very good, was very devout, was very sincere, but they weren't that concerned or involved in the, in the community in which they lived. They were, con they, were, they were there to reflect and find their own peace and their peace with God and so forth. Yeah. In the later period, and I suppose this would be, what, the 1300s, maybe the 1400s, the sort of Middle Ages, as it's called, they became more involved in the community, which is a good thing in many ways. There was mm. no welfare of any kind much. They were providing what was the nearest thing to a hospital, the nearest yeah. thing to social services in some places. Mm, yeah. uh, but as they did so, the monks' behavior also got worse. Oh, really? Apparently. Being exposed to the Yeah, they were world. more pros, prone to I what see. would be then called gluttony, to other forms of indulgence and so on, because they were exposed to it. Mm. And the, the, the sort of the narrow line we have to tread is to be in the world deal with the world. I mean, if you've just got a begging bowl and you're off in retreat and the only people you see are spiritual people, pretty yeah. much, um, you know, it's much easier to maintain that e spiritual equilibrium. So I've seen people, you know, even on this path, uh, lose track of their inner self uh, in the process of serving the world, yes, and then drift off the path completely. So it's a balance, and we see this, as I said earlier, in the higher freedoms. They enter 
the galactic samadhi and the deeper states for a reason, right. a service, you know, generated reason. Yeah. But they still do enter it. Yeah. Maybe for hundreds of thousands of years they enter it. Even at their stage, it's a necessary part of their, 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 their experience cycle, their evolutionary cycle. Mm. So you have this balance, and I think the nine freedoms... I don't think anyone any that I know of has ever brought that sort of perfect balance out. Yes, find peace, but there's a time to leave it. Yeah. And you know that, so you don't go around thinking, oh, I should really be more peaceful. Mm. You know what you're doing, mm. but then enter it again. Yeah. That's I, what the great ones do, that's what we should do. I... Um I've always, I've always really resonated with this idea of being in the world but not of it, I think. And as you say, there's, there's this perfect balance in the nine freedoms, I think, um, really, really always appealed to me. And, you know, just when I think back through, you know, just back like a few years through some of my like earlier experiences when I was first like finding the path and finding the nine freedoms, you know, obviously I, um, I, still, I still work, you know, have a job and everything. You have um, to, yeah. But uh, at that time I was working for a consulting company and, but I was, and, you, know, you know, going to work every day. It's a very materialistic environment. Um, but you know you can build relationships with people, and that's good. But I, I, I always remember there was one one manager I had, and um, you know everyone in the office kind of thought I was a bit quirky. You know they just couldn't quite yeah. understand yeah. me. Um, you know, um, but I, they, they just they. Um, I remember one manager contacted me a few years later, and she said, um, "Hey, I just wanted to let you know." Um, you know there was always something about you that really helped me to see that there's more important things in life, mm -hmm. and so. I, after you left, I quit and I became a yoga teacher. Yeah. And I was just like, you know, you know, being just us, you know, just being in the world and, um, you know, being able to offer people a different perspective, to be able to just be different, to radiate something more, you know, mm -hmm. as a result of the spiritual practices that you do. Mm. Um, and being able to inspire the people around you, even though you don't know that you're doing it, mm. I think is, is one aspect of this, being in the world but not of it. You know? It certainly is. And it's keeping the balance. Yeah. And I mean, I, 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 illustrating what you just said yeah. there, a last job I had before I worked for the society, oh, which yeah. was something in the region now 45 years ago because <laughs> okay, yeah. I've worked for the full yeah, society that long, for that, that long. long but I was a school teacher and then I briefly worked for a stationary company oh, yeah. and we had probably the most this is pre sort of digitization really so we had probably one of the most boring training programs you've ever had you know about paper <laughs> clips and uh, you, like I was, Dilbert, my it? job was okay, going to be okay. to train okay. sales reps actually at this okay. company and uh, we had the chap who was going to be the marketing manager and a few right. of us in this class and the chap teaching us had been in stationery all his life oh, okay. and he was teaching about full scap paper and you okay. know filing cabinets yeah. and etc so um and i'm not saying rightly as we sat there in this class about four or five of us and he was teaching us about these fascinating topics sellotape mm. i mean you don't know anything you, love yet. Yeah. Um, you know <laughs> i i i decided to do some mantra i'm not recommending this i'm okay. not saying it's good but okay. there's a point to this story so I was, I was looking and I was silently doing certain mantras while I listened to him mm. in this environment because um, I, knew, I, I knew enough to train these salespeople about full scale mm. and so on. But, uh, um, and as I say, don't do this, <laughs> but I was doing it. And I did this for a while and this is exactly what happened. The, next to me was the guy who was going to be the marketing manager who, who'd, you know, he was a business person. He'd been in business. He'd worked for other companies. He'd come into this one as I'd come in with a particular role. Mm -hmm. And there he was being taught the basics of stationery like me. And I'd been doing this for about an hour or two. And he, he, nobody knew. I, I was silent. I was listening. You know, I was kind of appeared to be doing listening the, anyway. Mentoring. Yeah. And um, he suddenly stood up in the middle of this training course. And this is exactly what he said. He said, if this sellotape is God and this paperclip is me and this full scap paper is the journey between me and God. And he gave a little dissertation. With this station, this is absolutely I I, I, true. I, I and the ch I stopped the mantra. I thought, okay, just. Yeah. <laughs> and the chap running the course, you know, looked really worried. And you know, eventually he he left the company. The next time I saw him was at a festival for mind, body, spirit on a stand of his own, teaching about Gurdjieff, I think it was. Wow. And he, he was, uh, but he'd become a metaphysician. Wow. Yeah, that's, that is, <laughs> that's... Um, I, 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 just, I just 
a bit off off topic, but so it's a very topic. unusual yeah. and absolutely true story. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. I, well, I think it illustrates again. You know, mm. I, I think I think it's a really interesting idea as well. You know, as you illustrate these monks going out and then being affected by the world around them. And yeah. It is true. I mean, I'm sure everyone on the spiritual path can resonate, particularly, you know, particularly living in the city of London or Los Angeles, yeah. whatever. Yeah, on, on an everyday basis, you know. Yeah, and you're coming up against disbelief. I mean, you have people who are, are materialistic, let us say. Mm. They think that, you know, the, the money or popularity or certain types of relationship or, or is the answer that's right. going to find them what they want, which is happiness. Mm. And they think people who are devoting themselves in spiritual service, making sacrifices, mm. not having the money they could have, and so forth, even perhaps appearing to lead a bit of a, a lone life. Um, in fact, no one on this path is alone. Mm. Um, there may be moments of loneliness. I'm not going to say there never will be. But you're not really ever alone because the great ones know about active spiritual workers. Right. People who are active are taken close to the hearts of the great ones. And that's a statement by Mars Sector 6, not actually in the Nine oh, Freedoms. Oh. But the, the, this materialistic person will think, well, they're fools. Mm. They look to be fools. Mm. To them, actually, they are wise because... You know, the, the, whereas the more the person who is solely materialistic, I'm not right. decrying material things here, right, by the right, way. Right. They are necessary at a certain level, mm -hmm. absolutely, for all of us in this mm -hmm. world. Um, but that person who believes in it as a way and a purpose and a meaning and that's all there is and there's mm -hmm. nothing else is actually the fool. Mm -hmm. no matter how successful they appear to be. Right. Whereas the spiritual person who's making sacrifices is creating for themselves a wonderful future, yeah. way beyond this life. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, every spiritual worker you know, active on the path can take heart from that, mm. certainly. I think, I think there's also, you know, as someone who's active in spiritual work, certainly um, you know, living in the world but not of it, how, you know, maybe we can talk about how you how you can overcome some of the conditioning and some you know the environment that you find yourself in because you know just talking about our society here, you know it's like hypersexualized content everywhere you know um, advertising all over the place. There's a lot of fear based media. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things keeping you down, mm. and uh, you know the more you expose yourself to it, the more it's almost detuning of mm. you. So maybe we can talk about you know if you're someone on this path, particularly mm. someone who's following you know the nine freedoms yeah. and the balance that we talked about in the beginning, some of the things that you could do. I mean, Well, it's very interesting, isn't yeah. it, that the second freedom comes before the third freedom, although they're not given in order of importance, uh -huh. because you need love energy to, f to fire the fuel, if you like, or to mm. fan the flame, shall we mm. say, of service. Yeah. That's probably a better way of putting it. Mm. And you need that. And so you have to generate love energy. And if you stop generating love energy, you'll forget why you even want to serve. Right. So you, you have to keep the flame burning, and it is a balance. Mm. And the balance was wrong. And in the old days, the mm. sadhu and so on who went into retreat, and we've talked about this before, and it's squarely in the nine freedoms, come ye hence, for ye are fools. Right. It's foolish if you think of it. It's a very foolish thing to just focus on your own development to the exclusion of all else, because it doesn't even fit with what you realize when you yes. get, gain enlightenment, agree. Agree, which is yeah. that agree. we're all one. Yeah. So there is a foolishness about that but in the world though there are tests that you have to face you come up against them and the only way is to tap into your higher consciousness there isn't really two ways mm. that's what you have to do but there, there are several ways of doing that but you have to be doing that yeah. um, and you and the, the wonderful thing is too which I've certainly Learned um, not just from the nine freedoms, I have yeah. to say, also from other transmissions such as from free will to mm -hmm. freedom. But since we've been doing this show, yeah. is that you, by practicing prayer, especially during a spiritual push, actually, but just generally practicing prayer um, in a dynamic fashion, you are raising your consciousness in that process, even yes. though your yeah, motive yeah. there yeah. is to help others. Yeah. By healing, you are raising your consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. You have to be in, in tune. You know, it comes back to this karma is pressure towards conformity. It comes to, a, you, you know, if you're accepting the pressures, as I said earlier, of karma, which is in front of you, and life will go to great extremes in the end to pressurize you to do that. Yeah. And if you put a blockage to it internally, I think there will be internal pressures through the mind 
possibly even ones that might be debilitating temporarily to get you to make that internal change. Now, yes. you can avoid that yeah. by making it yourself. So you've got to work in those, always in those two levels. So to come to something concrete you can do, mm. it's the practices. Look, you know, realize your inner potential is an absolute handbook. Yeah. I mean, I actually believe that some of the geniuses of history, and you don't have to look too far to see that they, some of them, not all of them, but many of them, led in balance, unbalanced lives, mm -hmm. needed a copy of Realize Your Inner Potential. <laughs> had they had that and practiced that, yeah. they could have still been geniuses, but led better lives. Mm. That's my theory, and mm -hmm. I stick to mm -hmm. it. Yeah. I want to come back to a couple of things you said there, particularly about the pressure, because I think a lot of people could resonate with that, you know, particularly a lot of the, the catalyst sometimes that causes people's awakening, call it that, or to, to, to causes them to really take up the spiritual path in earnest is often like some sort of thing, which is the result of that pressure that they've been feeling, like you said, either internally or yeah. th comes externally through some situation. It could even be something like depression. Now, I'm, yeah, I'm exactly. not saying that, you know, I'm not getting into the area of mental health and so forth. I'm not an expert in that field. But somebody could be depressed for spiritual reasons. You know, we don't talk about soul repression mm. nearly enough. We talk about mental repression, sexual repression, emotional repression, etc. But soul repression is a debilitating thing if you... If if, if, you, if it goes on, and it does go on with people, mm. and it'll, in, you know, if it's not manifested externally, it will manifest internally. Yeah. And you have to turn towards that light. And the more totally. advanced you are, you know, as a soul, the more necessary that will be. Yeah. Hence, you can't sort of say, well, that person's living a good and happy life, so therefore they're obviously a better person, karmically. Yeah. No, mm. it'll all depend on your evolutionary needs. Yeah, I, I can really resonate with that, you know, just in my experience. I remember literally just before like, I discovered the path, I, <clears throat> I basically I would have described myself as basically a committed atheist at that point. But just one night, I just, it was just, it, just everything just, just got to that point where I literally like cried out to God. And he answered. And, yeah. It answered. It yeah. answered. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I even like cried the whole night, to be honest. I, well, it just all like just came up and I just, I just yeah. couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. And then, yeah, all these spiritual experiences started to happen, yeah. um, which were just, you know, amazing to me. And then I discovered the 12 blessings and, you know, everything happened. After. You know, I want to tread on very careful ground here, but I do think some conditions diagnosed as mental health conditions and you know nobody really gets the you know this is what you've got and that's it and you're told that's mm. what you suffer from i'm not going to say all but i think there are some that would be absolutely resolved through spiritual expression mm. um, certainly alleviated and probably transformed if you took it far enough because at the root of it and it's not usually looked at by people in the in the sort of mental health profession i, I you know I, I think it's changing now though yeah. having said that so i'm not an expert in it sure. but the, this whole area of spiritual need of yeah. an individual yeah. is absolutely crucial to their whole total well-being yeah. physical mental emotional their whole psyche and psychic Mm. Psychic suppression, which is referred to um, in, in the nine freedoms, the fear of, of psychic development is mm. referred to, you know, the bravery you need to, to tackle this. Um, that too is very bad for you, psychic frustration. Yeah. Um, and, and it's really because, you know, uh, I think we've said before, if you're a person, you might be getting very strong intuitive impulses, but you don't think they are because mm. you don't think they exist. So mm. you think it's your imagination yeah. and yes. you're suppressing yes. that higher part of your nature. You might be a brilliant academic, but you're still suppressing something which is even greater than your academic brilliance. Yeah, and no, I love this because I think it's really basically highlighting that there's a key here to our total, as you say, the total expression of our and, and our well-being, mm. which is un, un, you know, taking away the suppression, finally expressing that spiritual yeah. urge inside of us. Yeah. Almost like you know, you know, that's that's what we that's what we all desperately need, mm. whether we whether we would call it that or realize that that's what it is or not. Yeah, and to put it, yeah. I suppose, really simply. There's good stress mm. and there's bad stress. Mm. And, you know, we come back to this brilliant quote from Dr. King that, uh, and I haven't got it word for word, so this is from memory, sure. but 
people are having too much experience to experience experience okay. the way experience should be experienced. <laughs> I think I've got that. it right if you follow <laughs> yeah. that. People are having too much. <coughs> yeah. But what he's driving at there, they're having the wrong experience. They're needless experiences. And so therefore, they're not gaining the experience they actually need. They mm. really do need. Mm. So of course, there's superfluous stress. The stress about things that really shouldn't bother us at all, sure. things yeah. we shouldn't be engaging in, sure. things that we're conditioned to think, I need. Right. You know, I won't be happy unless I'm married. I won't be happy unless I'm rich. I won't be, ha whatever, unless I have yeah. children. Things we're sort of told we need, which we may not need, depending mm. who we are mm. and what we're doing. Mm. And that can provide stress, and that is superfluous stress. So it's not that all pressure is good. It's that the higher pressure is essential. Yeah, and, and just relating that to experience again, I think that there is a certain stress that we feel when we don't think that we're, that's what we're meant to be doing. You know, like mm. there is, you know, there's a conditioning and kind of programming the story we're told about, you know, what you need to do in life. And when we're doing that and not really doing what we feel is our mission in life or, you know, really um, expressing that spiritual urge inside of us, I think there's a huge stress that starts to develop. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of it can be unconscious. Yeah. And, and that's even more deadly, really, because mm. you don't know why. Mm. And that people have no idea why they feel something is missing in my life. Right. And they, yeah. I, I bet you there's going to be people watching this. Yeah. They're walking around. They think there's something missing. And what I can promise them mm. is that that void can be filled by this, the nine freedoms. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's a, a great, great note to end on there. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody, it's Darren here. Thanks for tuning into the show. Now, if you enjoyed that episode, don't forget to subscribe for more wisdom from the Nine Freedoms. If you'd like to find out more about the Nine Freedoms, about Mars Sector 6 by Dr. George King, go to our website, that's ethereus.org. Richard and I love hearing from you, receiving your comments, your questions, and your spiritual experiences, and talking about them on the show. So do write to us, share them with us at spiritualfreedom at richardlawrence.co.uk. Always remember that service is the jewel in the rock of attainment. See you next time.